Okay, so here we are. This is the final asset. I brought it in in um, a set tool bag. This is version three. I didn't really texture the character. It, one thing that I wanted to do was, well, I wanted to present the materials, especially this um, the jacket, which was well the top, I guess, of the, which was the the main focus of the of the video. This is the one. All of this, the sediments in here, this is something that um, that I showed in the videos. So I wanted to represent them a little bit better because I I knew in my head what uh, what I wanted to make out of this. I knew the exact material that I was going for, and this is crucial. This is this goes back to something that I've mentioned in the in the videos is that um, it's uh, <laughs> well, like I said, it's crucial to to know what kind of materials we're going for. It's not, uh, it starts in Marvelous Designer. We select the presets, we we can modify the presets if they, if they don't really capture the uh, the look of the material that we want. Uh, and then it's, uh, it's the ZBrush stage where I personally, I find uh, materials come to life if we, if we know uh, what we are going for and if we know the tools that uh, that are available for us inside of ZBrush. So I'm going to run a little uh, turntable. It's going to be a bit laggy. There's uh, the scene is a bit heavy on the uh, on the lighting information, but this is what it looks like. Uh, this is said, right? This is the kind of leather that I wanted to get from the get-go, I knew that this is, this, is the going, this is going to be the material I was, uh, I was after. So what I did is uh, I created a tileable mask, a tileable kind of black and white texture, and then I assigned it to the jacket, the skirts, and everything in, in between. Uh, so what it created is um, this is, um, said effect with a little bit of fuzz here and there, right? And there's a little bit of um, um, subsurface scattering here. This is skin material actually on the on the jacket because uh, simply using simple fuzz uh, was giving me just the white, uh, this white fuzziness, but uh, the, the said material is a little bit more complex. So I've added a little bit of um, subsurface to get those uh, darker uh, darker blotches of 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 color of of information, but it, this is this is technical, right? This is not exactly what the tutorial is about. It's just that I wanted to sell the um, uh, the material uh, using as the, the most basic tools that that I could that I could find, which was what I just described. I didn't want to do any proper texturing. I didn't want to set up uh, Unreal shaders, nothing like that. This is just a purely for presentation. And everything else is um, it's kind of the same. Well, I have the same material on the shoes. Um, so they have a little bit of fuzz. And then it's a simple, it's not even leather, it's just a plastic material on the on the pants and on the, um, the collar. So uh, they have a little bit of um, roughness information, quite a bit too much, to be honest. I can see that there's just uh, too much noise. And this is the plastic piece. That I was um, that I was mentioning that I was at, at some point I was struggling just a little bit because I I knew that I wanted to be plasticky uh, I knew that it's going to be transparent but it's just uh, a little bit tricky to to sculpt something like this when you don't really when you don't have the real life or I guess this this kind of representation of that when it's actually translucent and you have a sharp light hitting it, right? But I think it turned out pretty well. There's um, there's some some reflections coming off it, and we can see the inside of it, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is not my my design. This is something that I've I found um, in Vogue, and I have a Pinterest uh, board. Uh, where I save all my pins from from Vogue magazine, so there's thousands and thousands of uh, of images, fashion images. So this is something that I do when I when I make my characters that that are primarily about about fashion, about clothing design, and those kind of things. So I, I just picked something that I liked and then I simply modified it. There's also a few things that I've that I've created off camera, which um, those little hooks right on the corset. This is simply to indicate that the uh, the corset can be opened up 
It's not something that has been uh, slapped on top on, on her and <laughs> she can't really get out of it now. I wanted to make some kind of functional a functional feel to it, functional look that it can be it can be in fact opened up. And those those things here, the on the on the bra and a little bit pattern on the on the leather, this is simply detail maps inside of Mar Marmoset, right? This is just uh, that's exactly what it's called, detail normal map. So I've I've applied a few a few details uh, to those elements to make them to make them look a little bit more interesting. This is again for pu purely for presentation sake. Something like this could have been done in uh, in ZBrush, uh, which is fine. But nowadays it's uh, it's a common practice to use detail maps because it saves the memory and it's a uh, just a much better quality uh, because nothing is is really is being compressed. It's just a tileable texture added on top of everything that we have. And that's about it. Uh, the face obviously is just a just template head that I use most of the time for my characters. But yeah, this is uh, this is the final look. This is the final design. Again, the uh, the set is simply to uh, to help to sell the material. It's something that I wanted to do from the from the get go, and I think there is uh, there is some success to this. <laughs> It can it can definitely be improved just like anything else, but for the most part, I think it's it's working really well, and this is something that is um, that is nice uh, nice to do, to use really basic tools when we are done with uh, with our with our asset with our work, right? We can we can load it in um, either Marmoset or maybe Unreal maybe Unity doesn't really matter whichever one you prefer I just uh, I personally use Marmoset because it's so simple the complexity sometimes is required but <laughs> at the same time the complexity is just uh, it's just uh, another dozens of hours which I which I don't really have or I don't really want to put into this character so I view I'm, I'm mainly using Marmoset for for those kind of things and um, the, the the beautiful thing about it is that when I know uh, the kind of look I was going for, I can create a simple shader, apply it to the um, apply it to the model to the assets, and then I can I can see whether this was a success or not. Right? If uh, when I see all the color information, when I see all this uh, texturing information, which again is just a, like I said, it's a, it's not exactly a texture. Albedo is just color. There's nothing in there. And then there is the uh, fuzz map, which is a mask created in Substance Painter. And then there's Cara map, which is the exact same map, but just a, a little bit more neutral. So that's 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 everything. That's the whole shader. There's nothing uh, complex about it, which is the beauty of it. So right. So when we when we create something like that, something simple that we can we can apply. To um, assets, we can examine it a little bit better. We can we can zoom in or zoom out. Doesn't de depends on what we're going for, and we can we can see uh, which things don't really work. Which things next time that we make the asset something that is similar. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be. The asset itself doesn't have to be similar. It's the it's the material that needs to be similar, right? If we're making another asset that is made out of sand, uh, it can be anything. It can be pants next time right uh, but but the material is the same so when we we have all this information to read when we have the lighting that's somewhat interesting something some somewhat sharp maybe we do the opposite some diffuse lighting we can examine things better and we can see what works and what doesn't and next time we can improve so for example in here i can see that this sleeve is a little bit off there's just uh, too much information here in this particular region. It doesn't really work for me. I I can't. Um, well, it's just too puffy. There's just simply too too many folds. There's simply too much information on the sculpting. So next time I can definitely make uh, make something a little bit more interesting. Make uh, just reduce the amount of folds. Maybe make them a little bit sharper. Something like here, and uh, and yeah, it's going to be an improvement, right? It's uh, my memory will remember those things. 
and I will I will try to to kind of improve next time I do something. So it's it's nice to to get some kind of visual representation, finalized visual representation of the things that we've, we've been sculpting, because sculpting is. Um, is somewhat limited. Uh, we, uh, we we don't really have a, um, a a point of reference, right? We we just make things in um, in ZBrush and we think that it's 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 great. But when we when apply all of this all of this information on top of that, we can actually we can we can see things a little bit in a different perspective. We can see it with some more depth to it. So it's nice. It's nice to, to do something like this and all the. All the meshes, by the way, I haven't done any any retopo. This is purely decimated uh, stuff. You can see the the wireframe is just uh, is just awful. And I've used on most of those things. I've used uh, ZBrush UV Unwrap or UV Master. I don't remember where, what it's called uh, to unwrap those things quickly. Some of some of the elements I've I've unwrapped manually because I want to make sure that they are following the uh, the seams right just to be to be safe. So when I when I applied shade material, I didn't want for seams to be running somewhere here. So uh, jackets and uh, skirt and a few elements in here I've unwrapped manually to to get the uh, just to make sure that everything is is, is precise the way I want it to be. But other things can be unwrapped uh, using using ZBrush, we, so we don't spend too much time on that. And and that's about it. Everything else that is happening here in terms of lighting and all of that, that's outside of uh, outside of this tutorial. But I, I still wanted to, to show that even this, this kind of beauty shot, not only does it make you feel better, about something that you you just completed, uh, so you don't leave it as a as a sculpture. Even though it's, it's sculpture is 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 um, in itself a beautiful thing, but if you can if you can put it in a in a kind of like a beauty shot, me personally, I feel I feel good about this. I kind of it to me it's a, it's it's almost a confirmation that I've I've completed this work, so I can I can move on and don't get back to it um, uh, in the future. Uh, so not only it's a kind of dopamine kick, <laughs> but at the same time there is uh, there is in fact useful information in here, something that can be analyzed, something that can be uh, memorized, and next time can be approved upon. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it was it was useful. There's uh, quite a bit of information. There's quite a bit of things that I've done off camera, but I still wanted to uh, to make sure that I've um, all the information that is um, that is practical, that is uh, useful. I I did record, and uh, the rest was was repetition of that. Right, it's uh, just uh, just the same techniques, the same tools, but just uh, done uh, done on camera, and that's that's uh, that's an important thing to to say. At the end of the day, it does a lot of this does come come to repetition. If this is something that is new, if this is something that you would want to try and see what the results are like, uh, the first time is going to be a bit awkward, a bit slow, uh, maybe frustrating in some in some areas. In some cases, maybe there's going to be something that um, that is not easily understandable. But the more you do this, the more you practice, the faster, the, the better you get at this stuff. So when I, when I make this, when I don't record a video tutorial for, for something like this, all of this stuff is just automated. I don't even think about how things should be. I just do it. I, I, just, I just know what the task is, what the goal is, and I know what the tools I'm going to be using. Every now and then I would use uh, different tools. So for here, for this, uh, for this particular, tutorial. I've used um, a few elements that I haven't tried before, but uh, it's just something that I that I unconsciously do. And um, usually it does work out, but for the most part, it's the same, the same stuff, right? It's the same, the same uh, uh, toolkit that I've developed for myself. And I've, I've been doing this uh, long enough to, uh, to understand that they, in fact, work that I'm yet to come to some new technique or some new, uh, some new way of doing things that would improve the, the results that I have here. And it's, uh, 
uh, the results are they're accurate they're beautiful and they're quite uh, quite efficient they they easily modifiable they they're not in a sense they're not destructive so things can be changed and things can be shared which is another important thing when when we work with uh, uh with other people when we work in a studio environment even if it's freelance that's not to be studio environment uh, if it's freelance and you know that uh, there's a there's a chance of of this assets be of this asset being modified of, of the model that you're working on can be modified by other people maybe in the future somebody needs to get back to those assets and do something to them if you can create your asset in such a way that the, the person, the next person who opens it up doesn't just um, end up sitting there blanking, looking at everything that is, that is, that is there, like crazy, uh, crazy topology, everything kind of merged together. Maybe instead of having uh, the skirt and those strips being separate, maybe they're just dynamesh into one thing. Maybe the ZBrush tools the sub tools they just uh, kind of not even named properly right they just lie in there with no folder with no structure no organization whatsoever so those things um it's a good thing to practice that as well right the organization to to think that this can be in the future uh, used by somebody else if you are in, working in the production if you're not working for print for example where you if when you complete something and it's it's kind of off off you go you're not going to get back to it ever again but if it's something that is done in production those things pipeline wise organization wise it's important to to keep in mind that there is a chance of you or somebody else might come and need to and need to modify something here so that's that's kind of my thought process it's uh, it's practicality it's a uh, practicality in terms of I want to make sure that uh, the things that I do personally they they work they're efficient and they're fun so when I when I have good clean topology for example it's fun for me to sculpt on that it's fun for me to make things like that right those the streams instead of going there with a with a precise strokes with a brush which is a bit frustrating if you if you need to redo this it may using some some simple masking techniques to me at least that's that's a bit fun right it's it's not just something that frustrating it's kind of doing this in a, in a in a matter of seconds and you get the results in front of your eyes that's very clear so that's that that that's that gives me a little bit of a kick um in a good sense <laughs> so it's uh on the on the one hand it's it's practical and efficient for me personally to work on something like that and practical and efficient if somebody else needs to do something with this asset so that's it. That's the uh, that's the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck. Have fun. Have fun making making your your models, making your characters. That's the uh, that's that's the crucial part. That's the that's the secret. Try to have as much fun as you can while you're making something. <laughs>